Hey guys, happy Friday. Alright, we got an HTC One running, um, what else? But stock Android CM10. Uh, that's Cyanogen Mod 10.1. I'm running the latest build, which is June 7, 2013, with the most updated gaps, which is Google Apps, which would be March 1, 2013, Google Apps, uh, which is basically um, customized for 4.2.2. And um, I just flashed this. I've flashed it before in the past, but I was really content with Sense, and I still am. Um, I use Android Revolution 10.1, uh, which is running 4.2.2 with Sense 5, and I'm happy with it, and I'm likely going to revert back. But I wanted to go ahead and flash CM10 just to give you guys an idea of how it looks, um, what it feels like, whether it's faster, uh, whether it's uh, more functional, and what you're going to get with the stock experience versus HTC Sense. So, uh, on that note, let's just go ahead and go into the lock screen here. And obviously, it's the stock lock screen, but there are a, mi a few minor differences here, and I'll show you what they are. All right, so you got the stock lock screen, and if I take this uh, uh, little lock button here and I swipe it, you get kind of like little shortcuts. Uh, similar to Sense, but you can customize these shortcuts as you wish, whereas with Sense, um, you're basically left with a situation to where whatever you have on your dock below is what you're going to get um, in the lock screen. So with this, you can see you have uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, different icons that you can place there. I'm not sure if you can customize it to have more on the bottom, but I got browser, dialer, music, messages, and of course unlock. And obviously, since it is 4.2.2 build, you get the lock screen widgets. Um, and of course, if you go to the right, you get the camera. Now, I wanted to start with the camera. Now, a lot of people have been asking, well, um, given that, you know, HTC Sense, or given that the HTC One is a four megapixel, quote unquote, ultra pixel camera, is the stock camera uh, gonna make a difference towards the quality? Uh, thus far, I've used this stock camera, and to be quite honest with you, I have noticed slight difference in quality. Uh, you, I don't know if you could see that. I mean, it's really kind of, I mean, look at the colors. It just turned magenta. So, <laughs> you know, there's a little bug right there. Uh, it could be because of the lighting, of course, but in any case, the quality just isn't there, in my opinion, uh, even if you turn it around. Um, the quality is just not as nice. I mean, obviously, it takes pictures pretty quickly. You have the uh, panorama. I don't see photosphere, but I see panorama, camera, and um, recorder. So it's the stock camera app that you're going to get. Is it optimized like HTC Sense camera app is optimized? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. No. So with that said, uh, that's, I guess, suppose one of the drawbacks here is that the camera is not going to have the same flurry of options that you get with the Sense camera and clearly it's not optimized. Uh, now other than that, obviously you get the similar uh, CM10 features, you know, or stock features, two fingers, you can get the uh, quick settings right here and you can customize this um, and I'll show you how to do that. If you go to your settings here and you go to launcher, um, it's somewhere here. Let's see, actually, let me go back here. If you go to system. You go to quick settings panel, you can adjust this as you wish. You can even adjust it to a quick pull down, meaning I can uh, pull it down from the right if I wanted to, or I'll show you how that works. So I click put on right, and if I uh, pull down from the right hand side, I get the quick settings. If I pull on from the left hand side, I get the regular settings. So, um, you know, I turn that off because if I needed to bring the uh, quick settings down, I'll just use two fingers, or on that note, I could just click this button right here. So, again, stock-esque, stock and just to give you an idea how it feels, it is pretty fast. It's pretty, uh, you know, it's fluid in, in its day-to-day -day use in terms of, or not its day-to-day -day use, it's fluid in its um, overall use in terms of transitioning through screens, pulling the notification bar down, everything is, is really clean. The text is super duper clean. Um, let me just show you guys the text here close up. You can see the text is super duper clean, uh, not a pixel inside. Of course, you're going to get that with 1080p. Um, I like the fonts. The fonts are nice. I do prefer the Sense fonts, but you know I've always been a big proponent of CM10 and stock Android, so I do like this build. It's very similar to the other builds that I've had on various phones: the Galaxy S3, the Nexus 4, the Note 2, etc. So you're, you know it's not much of a difference, but it's uh, you know it is a difference coming from Sense or coming from TouchWiz, for example. Um, the browser is you know the browser is uh, very smooth. It's it's very responsive to your touch. Um, you know let's just. Go ahead and pan around here. If we request desktop site. Uh, speeds are good. You know, it's it. <laughs> in my in my house, for whatever reason, the HSPA Plus and the LTE is just very shoddy. Um, I get very awkward speeds in my house. But in any case, it's it's a smooth browser. You get the uh, multi-touch and the five-finger multi-touch. So you can pan around the screen as you're pinch zooming. Um, you know, you can see it's very smooth. It doesn't redraw. Uh, or you just redraw it right there. So you get checkerboards, I guess. But 
Um, you know, it is a nightly build. Uh, you know, I see this is the thing. It's unacceptable to have checkerboards when you're dealing with a uh, Snapdragon 600 cross, uh, quad core processor. But in any case, I mean, it's it's one of those things where. Really, it's in the eye of the beholder. I don't think it's a deal breaker, no less, because you'll get checkerboards with almost any WebKit-based Android browser, even in the iPhone in many cases. So, um, you know, the keyboard right here, you can see the keyboard's very responsive. And the one thing I like about this keyboard over the one that you're offered uh, in the Play Store, which Google offers now, you can download the Google, um, you can actually download the stock keyboard in the Play Store for free. And the reason why I like this iteration over that iteration is because of the noise it makes. Oh, look at that, see, I got a force close, so. That's a never a good thing when you get a force close. All right, so we just I guess what happened was as it as it was uh as it was putting the quadrant icon on the uh, home screen because if you go to the Play Store you go to settings uh, you can see that it says auto add widgets. So I guess what happened was while it was auto adding the widget Trebuchet, which is CM10's launcher, force closed on me. So maybe that's a you know it could be an isolated uh, incident or not. Who knows? But in any case. Um, you know, you got your regular widgets. Obviously, if you go to the uh, uh, app drawer, you can see all the widgets right there. Stock widgets. Uh, comes with Apollo. Um, music player Apollo. Um, no bloatware whatsoever, literally. I mean, this is all you get when you install this. I mean, minus a few of the apps. Um, I think I downloaded, or haven't even downloaded anything yet, to be honest with you. But you get File Manager, so you get one of their, you get CM's File Manager, which is a good file manager. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and... You know, one thing that I'm I, I'm feeling uh, kind of a uh, I, I miss actually is Blink Feed. You know, to, a lot of people kind of like I guess give Blink Feed a hard time because you can't disable it. But to be honest with you, it's been pretty useful for me, and it's one thing that I miss. I know I can use different third-party apps like Flipboard, but um, it's something that when I swipe to the uh, left, I'm expecting Blink Feed. Just as a lot of iPhone users, when they swipe to the left, uh, expect Spotlight. So it's one of those things I'm used to now. Um, Let's see, so we can go ahead and just run a quick quadrant, I suppose. People always ask for benchmarks. So let's see what quadrant looks like on the HTC One C running CM 10.1. Uh, the blacks are really black on the screen, and the screen on the HTC One, I, I mean, yeah, I have to give them a lot of credit for this screen. Uh, the LCD with the IPS and the 1080p is just absolutely gorgeous. Likely the best screen I've ever seen on a smartphone, and that's in comparison to a Galaxy S4, which is a super AMOLED 1080p screen, but has 441 pixels per inch, whereas with the HTC One, you do have 468 pixels per inch. Is it discernible to the human eye? Likely not. Uh, the S4 is a pentile matrix, which means it has uh, pixels within uh, subpixels within pixels. Again, is it something that's going to be noticeable to the human eye on a 1080p screen? Likely not. A lot of people will have a hard time even noticing a difference between 720p and 1080p, but I will tell you if you look hard enough, uh, you will see that 1080p is just slightly bit sharper. All right, we're almost done here. Let's just make sure the network doesn't crash. Sometimes happens here on Quadrant. Okay. Oh my god, look how tiny that is. Oh, that's a pretty bad score too. I don't know why it's so small, I guess because of the rendering of the resolution of the ROM, but it says 6308, which is pretty slow. Um, in comparison to what I get with, um, I don't know if I have a screenshot of it here. Do I have a screenshot of Quadrant? Okay, so this is the score that I got with um, Sense5 Android Revolution 10.1. Uh, it's 13,819. And with CM, it looked like we got about 6,308. 6, so quite a big difference there and I have noticed a little bit of stutter here and there with this ROM. I'm sure it's utilizing uh, Project Butter because it's 4.2.2 uh, but you know it's just definitely in my so far in my use thus far uh, it just doesn't feel as smooth or refined as Sense 5 and clearly you know uh, when you're dealing with the stock build that comes with the phone it's going to be smoother but in past um, experiences with CM10 in my opinion with the S3 and the Nexus 4 for example it was above and beyond buttery smooth um, above the stock launcher so you know again it, it could be an individual isolated case or it could just be a situation to where it's not fully fully uh, rendered yet and that's okay so they're still nightly builds and experimental builds and as a, as a data daily driver I would definitely suggest using it if, if you're a big stock Android fan and you have the HCC one um, one of the issues that I found when I first flashed this was the voice search wasn't working it kept force closing on me there's a fix for that if you go to the Play Store update Google search and it'll be solved. So if you have issues where you're pushing this little microphone and it's crashing on you, when you flash this ROM, just go update it in the Play Store and that'll fix that. Um, other than that, you know, very simplistic. I mean, you don't get many apps. I mean, you don't get Gmail, you gotta download that manually. Hangouts, you gotta update Google Talk uh, immediately uh, to turn into Hangouts. Um, 
Oh, you can customize these buttons right here. Uh, like, I'll give you an example of how this works. So, if I double tap it, mm. Oh, if I hold it, then it brings up my multitasking pane. Then I could just swipe them away, or if I push this button, I could just close them all out automatically. Um, and there's ways to customize that. If you go to Launcher, or I believe it's, is it Launcher? I keep going back to Launcher, but, hmm. No, you know what? It's not Launcher. It's gonna be under System, and then, No, it's definitely not quick settings. Hardware keys, there we go. So you can do enable custom actions, and when you enable the custom actions, you can enable the home button, the home key, the menu key, and the uh, menu key long press, um, various different ways. So that's customizable. And, um, you know, you get your contacts, which is just the, I like the color of the contacts. It's got that nice light blue finish. Um, and just, you know, I've done CM10 videos in the past, so it's not much different. But it's one of those things where if you're really, really down on sense and you're looking for stock Android, then CM is the way to go. I know Paranoid Android is a good ROM, but this is stable enough uh, to run on your HTC One as a daily driver. Uh, you're not going to deal with many bugs. Everything's compatible with it. Uh, you know, you saw I had a forced close in the midst of downloading an app from the Play Store, but that could have been because it auto adds widgets onto the home screen, or it could have been simply an isolated incident. Um, the camera, definitely not optimized uh, for the 4 megapixel ultra pixel uh, camera. It's, you know, doesn't have the flurry features that you're going to get with Sense. Um, you know, you're missing blink feed, you don't have Zoe. Uh, the keyboard is probably one of the biggest pluses for me. Um, just go ahead and show you guys the keyboard again. The keyboard is just super responsive. I mean, this stock and the sound, this sound, to me, is the best. Um, I don't know why, it, it, I guess it's a mental thing, but it, it, it beats the sound that you get with the one that they have in the Play Store, which sounds almost like the gingerbread build of Android with that old school keyboard that they used to have, but it's just super responsive, and you know, the, it, I like that it, it predicts the next word for you, it fixes it, like if I put and, like watch this, if I put and that, oh, I spelled it wrong. You see how I put it in one word? It'll fix that for me and separate it. So I think that's really cool. Um, let's go ahead and test the microphone here. Hey buddy, what's going on? Tomorrow is Saturday night. Do you want to go hang out in Hollywood? Let's see what's going on on Hollywood Boulevard. All right, man, give me a call at 818-999-5555. There you go. Set reminder tomorrow, 3 p.m., need to go to the doctor. Oh, I haven't said I haven't turned on Google Now, but you know all the Google Now features are there, obviously. Um, you know, otherwise, uh, let's see. You get the clock. Um, you know, again, the widgets with the weather and whatnot. You get multiple home screens. You get that little blue effect. No inertia effects. No bouncy effects. You get that little blue effect when you're above or when you scroll up or over scroll down. So um, of course, you get developer options, super user. Uh, various profiles, location access, very similar to what you're going to get with Sense, I mean, except in a stock shell. So, uh, there you guys go. I'll, I'll post a link below where to get this ROM. I have a how to install on the uh, on another uh, video that I have for, I believe, the Nexus or the S3, one or the other. But it's very s simple to install. I mean, the, the hardest part about uh, going through the process is, is unlocking the bootloader and rooting this phone. But once you get that down and you flash a recovery, uh, flashing ROMs is pretty simple. Um, so, if you guys have any questions in relation to how to flash this, uh, go ahead and ask me. Again, I'll post some links below about where to get this ROM. And if there's anything else that you guys want to know about this ROM, go ahead and ask me. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching, and uh, have a good and safe weekend.